All right, boys and girls, this is Math Message 3-9, the main math lesson of the day. And in this lesson today, we're going to learn about our multiplication square facts. And I'll explain that a little bit more um, here in just a bit. Let's go ahead and start with a quick warm-up. Go ahead and grab paper and pencil or whiteboard, and I'm going to give you some word problems, and I want you to draw a picture as I read the story, and let's do the word problems together. All right, gather your things. Okay. In this problem, it says you have two homework pages each school day. So how many homework pages do you have in a five-day school week? So go ahead and draw a picture of that. You have two homework pages each school day. So if this is a school day, I have two pages. I'm going to put 2P in there so I know what I'm talking about. How many homework pages do you have in a five-day school week? So if this circle is my day, I've got day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five. And each day has two pages. How many pages of homework do I have in a five-day school week? Write your number model down for this problem. All right, I have five groups of two. And how much is five groups of two equals 10? 10. 10 homework pages. All right, let's do the next one. Oops, went the wrong way, I think. My orientation must be off on my board here. All right, there we go. I had to pause the video and get that fixed. Okay, so now let's look at this problem. Start to draw a picture. A cook places 10 grapes in each of seven fruit cups. So how many grapes are there in all? Go ahead, pause the video, draw a picture, write your number model, and find the answer. A cook places 10 grapes in each of seven fruit cups. How many grapes are there in all? All right, so I have seven fruit cups. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I have ten grapes in each one. All right, so the, this is my cups, and these are grapes inside of there. That's what my picture should look like. What would my number model be? I have seven groups of 10. And when I multiply by 10, put a zero on the end. My answer should be 70. All right, let's look at the next problem. Kara has five stickers on each page of her journal. Her journal has eight pages in it. So how many stickers does Kara have? Go ahead and draw your picture, write your number model, and find your answer. Kara has five stickers on each page of her journal. Her journal has eight pages in it. How many stickers does Kara have? Pause the video. All right, so she has eight pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's five stickers on each one. So these are my pages. And then five stickers on each one. What should your number model be? I have eight groups of five. I know that when I multiply by five, I can just count by fives. And my answer should be 40. Now, 40 what? Are we looking at 40 pages or are we looking at 40 stickers? Always go back to the question so you know how to label it. How many stickers? So that would be 40 stickers. All right, there we go. All right, so now that we're warmed up, let's get back to our math message. Again, today we're going to be working on our multiplication square facts. So obviously, you know what multiplication is, um, but now we'll talk about what square facts are here in just a few minutes. 
I'm going to need you, if you have access at home, to get on your everyday math, that's what I'm going to need you to do because we're going to need to use some e-tools on our everyday math site. If you are not able to get on your everyday math, then you will need some centimeter grid paper so that you can draw some arrays. But it would be kind of fun if you were able to get on your everyday math. And I'll show you how to do that. So go ahead and pause the video um, and get on either your everyday math or um, get on or get some centimeter grid paper. All right, if you look at your workbook page for this lesson, um, it is actually. Let's see here, what page? Page 86. There really isn't a whole lot on that page. It's just kind of giving you directions for what you're going to do on your centimeter grid paper. Um, so you can refer to that in your workbook on page 86 or just kind of follow along with me on what I'm doing here on the computer. All right, so when I'm in my everyday math, I'm going to choose my e-toolkit. And I'm going to build some arrays today. So I'm going to go down to my e-tools down in the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm going to choose Array Builder. Now this Array Builder can be a little tricky to figure out how to use it first, but once you get used to it, um, you'll, you'll totally understand it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab this little thing down at the bottom that looks like an array. It's got little stars on it. You're going to drag it up on your screen. Now, that is your array builder. Now it says to go ahead and create an array and choose your options on the toolbar and then click build array. So down here on the toolbar, the first thing I want you to do is you are going to build a just a one by one array. So go ahead and choose the number one for rows and choose the number one for columns and click on build array. Now once you build the array, you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on create array picture and that's going to create a picture for you and then just kind of set it off to the side. All right, now click on your array builder again and now I want you to build an array with two rows and two columns. So change it to two rows and two columns. Click build array and there's your array and then create array picture and then put that over to the side. Again, click on your array builder and you're going to do a three by three. So three rows, three columns, say build array. It'll build the three by three for you. And then you can say create array picture and it'll create a picture that you can put up here. I'll do one more with you and then I'm going to kind of turn you loose and let you do this on your own, okay? All right, so click on your array builder again. You're going to do four rows and four columns. So you kind of see what you're doing. You did one that was one row, one column, two rows, two columns, three rows, three columns, and now four rows, four columns. Click build array. It builds it for you and then say create array picture and it'll create the picture that you can put up there. Okay, so go ahead and um, click on and do that all the way up to a 10 by 10. So you're going to do, um, you did a 4 by 4, you're going to do a 5 by 5, a 6 by 6, a 7 by 7, an 8 by 8, a 9 by 9, and a 10 by 10. Go ahead and get those all built on your screen. Um, pause the video while you're getting that done and then come back to the video and I'll tell you what to do in the next step. Now you're going to probably need to have two tabs opened up on your computer. One tab um, with this video and then the other tab where you're in your everyday math. Alright, pause the video. Okay, so once you get all of your arrays built, and I don't have all of my arrays built on this screen, I just wanted to show you the next thing I want you to do. Um, so once you have all your arrays built, I want you to come down here to the bottom of your screen on the bottom toolbar and click on that little one that looks like it's a pencil and there's a little letter A at the top corner. And you're going to select the T for text. Okay. And then you're going to come and click on underneath of each of your arrays, 
come up right underneath of your array so that it gets it up there. And I'm going to label what this array is. This was a one by one. It had one row, one column. And then I'm going to write down what that would, um, what the product would be for that. So a one by one is just one. Okay, click off of there. Now I'm going to come click underneath of my two by two, and I'm going to label that a two times two equals, and what is a two by two? That equals four. And I'll come and click underneath of my three by three and label that a three times three equals, and if I count those up, that equals nine, and so on. So you're going to click underneath of each of the arrays that you built, and it'll pull up that text um, box that you can type in. Okay, and again, you find that in your bottom toolbar where there's a little pencil with the letter A. When you click on that, you can choose text because I think that's easier than trying to write it. You can also write it, but to me, that's, that's a little bit harder. But whichever one you find to be easier. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and label all of your arrays, and then we're going to talk about them. Now, if you cannot do these arrays on the computer, on the eToolkit, in your everyday math, you can use your centimeter grid paper and do the exact same thing. You can draw them out and label them on your centimeter grid paper. Okay, so once you are finished, your page should look something like this. I have, and I left off my one by one on this page, sorry about that. So I have a two by two equals four, a three times three equals nine. Now let's check your answers to make sure that you counted correctly as you were um, finding your products. A four by four, four times four equals 16. A five times five equals 25. A six times six equals 36. A seven times seven equals 49. And 8 times 8 equals 64, a 9 times 9 equals 81, and a 10 times 10 equals 100. Okay, so check and make sure that you have all of your arrays, that you have them labeled correctly, and that you have the correct products. Now, as you're looking at this screen, what do you notice about every single problem? There's a couple things that I want you to notice. If you need to pause the video and give yourself some thinking time, that would be great. Okay, one of the things that you should have noticed is that every single one of these problems has um, their, their factors are the same. So a two by two, the factors are both the same. A three by three, the factors are the same. A four by four, the factors are the same. So one of the things I want you to notice is that in every single one of these problems, the factors are the same. What does that kind of remind you of? Does it kind of remind you of doubles facts when you were, that you were having to memorize in first and second grade? You know, your 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 4 plus 4, 5 plus 5. Kind of looks like doubles facts, but these are multiplication instead of addition. All right, so in each of these facts, the factors are the same. So it's kind of like double facts. But in multiplication, we call them multiplication squares. Because what else did you notice about every single one of these? Did you notice that the arrays all made perfect squares? If you have two rows and two columns, that's going to make a square, right? If you have three rows and three columns, that's going to make a perfect square four rows and four columns, that will make a perfect square. So that, boys and girls, is why these problems are called multiplication squares. And just like in first and second grade, when your teacher expected you to memorize your um, doubles facts, I am going to expect you to memorize these multiplication squares. These are the facts, boys and girls, that I need you right now to bury in your head right now. Okay, so, so far with multiplication, we have learned a strategy for our times two. We know that anything times two, I just double it. We know a strategy for times five. I know any time I'm multiplying by five, I can just count by fives. We have a strategy for times 10. I know that when I multiply by 10, put a zero on the end. We've also looked at times one, where anything times one, the product is just the other factor or the other number. 
we've worked on time zero, where anything time zero is just zero. And now, boys and girls, we are going to memorize our square facts. By the end of third grade, we're going to be fluent in our multiplication facts. But kind of step by step, we're learning them um, little by little. But now I want you to start memorizing your multiplication square facts. Now, I do have some fun rhymes to help us memorize these facts. And I'm going to show you those rhymes here in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I need you to bury these facts in your brain and practice, practice, practice them, okay? I'm going to introduce you before I um, teach you my fun rhymes that I have to go along with these multiplication squares. I am going to show you a game that you can play to practice at home or we'll practice at school a lot with this game as well. Okay, so this is the game, Ruling and Recording Squares. And on this game, you are just going to need um, the Ruling and Recording Squares record sheet, which I'll show you that here in just a minute. And I'll give you the option to print that off. And you're going to need a 10-sided die. Now, you could find that 10-sided die. You could go into your, again, your e-toolkit. And you can select dice. And then you can create um, a 10, or right here, right here is a 10-sided die, this one right here. And when you roll it, okay, let's see here. I should be able to just roll that. Oh, there we go. Press that button right there. Oh, that's not 10-sided. That one there is the... That one there is the 12-sided die. Let's see if, if I can figure out how to do a 10-sided. Okay, I guess it's, I think it's this red one here is going to make your 10 side. And you can choose small or large. You can bring that up there on your screen. And then you can roll the dice. So then here's what you're going to do. When you play this game, you're going to roll the die. If you roll a 2, then you're doing the problem 2 times 2. So you know your answer is 4. If you do a 9, uh, roll a 9, you know that 9 times 9, 81. Um, and so you will have a recording sheet. Let me see if I can bring up that recording sheet. Here's the boring recording sheet that they give us here. I like to make fun ones. And on your recording sheet, it has all of the answers. So a 1 times 1, of course, equals 1. 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 3 equals 9. 4 times 4 equals 16. 5 times 5 equals 25. 6 times 6 equals 36. Um, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, and 10 times 10 is 100. So if I roll a 2, 2 times 2 is 4, I'm going to shade in a box. And then my partner can go. If my partner rolls a 9, they can shade in 81, okay, because 9 times 9 is 81, all right? Now, I like to make fun little, let's see if I can find it here. I'll uh, put this on the website too. I like to make fun little seasonal things where it has all of the products listed here on a cute little picture and then you and your partner can each have a picture and you color it in. As you roll the die, you color in your products. So if I rolled a 9, 9 times 9 is 81, I can color in the 81 there. Um, if I roll a 9 times 9 again, there's a little feather up here that says 81. Now, if I happen to roll the die and my product is all colored in, I don't have any more, then I just kind of lose that turn. And then we play the game to see who can color the picture in the quickest. Okay? So that is the game of rolling and recording squares. Now let me introduce you to my fun math rhymes. Okay, I was having a little bit of trouble finding my um, web page that already has these rhymes on them. I'm going to have to do a little bit of fixing that up. So I just pulled up um, uh, something else here that might at least give you a chance to introduce you to them. And then we'll practice them a lot more in class. All right, so for 2 times 2, now this one actually should be a quite an easy one. But over the years, I've had students help me write these rhymes. So uh, for 2 times 2, 2 sets of twins on the floor, 2 times 2 equals four and everything rhymes right floor and four to help you remember and then i'm free i'm free and i feel fine three times three equals nine 
and for four times four, again, I use the word floors for four. Floors, floors, they need clean. Four times four is 16. For five times five, I have five Bs and five hives. Five times five is 25. For seven times seven, I have seven in heaven, feeling fine. Seven times seven is 49. So feeling fine, 49. Six dogs with six sticks. Six times six is 36. Um, oops. Oh, I just had them out of order for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> and then I ate and I ate and got sick on the floor. Eight times eight is 64. Sick on the floor, 64. And then nine nines having fun. Nine times nine is 81. Um, and then again, 10 times 10 shouldn't be hard, but I had students a couple years ago that wanted to write this one. So 10 times 10 is 10 storms, 10 clouds thundered, 10 times 10 is 100. All right, boys and girls, that is the lesson for multiplication squares. Um, Basically, you are learning in this one your square facts. They're like your multiplication doubles facts. Let me get back to, there we go. These are your multiplication doubles. These are the facts we need you to get memorized and lock into your brain. These are just like your addition doubles, but they're multiplication doubles. So we call them square facts because when you draw them out into an array, they make a perfect square. All right, guys, play the games. Memorize, memorize, memorize.